warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 8th of February. Now, there's some fairly concerning research actually been done in, in Staten Island in New York about infected deer. This, this idea of reverse zoonosis that humans are giving the virus to animals. And that's got some fairly profound implications, I think. So I'm going to look at that in a minute. But before we do that, let's just do some general orientation as to what's going on at the moment. So here's just sort of a basket of countries, really. Uh, new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million. Denmark, where all restrictions have been lifted. All the restrictions were lifted probably about here, about, around about that time there. Cases went up a bit, but now seem to be levelling off. And I'm expecting them to go down really quite dramatically fairly soon in Denmark. Israel starting to go down quite steeply. Netherlands probably about levelling off now. France going down. Gibraltar, very vaccinated uh, nation going down. Or very vaccinated area going down. Germany, United Kingdom, uh, Australia, United States, Japan, Canada, India. So a fair increase in cases uh, in Japan as Omicron starts to take hold in Japan, as as we've been anticipating. But of course, we, we've argued we've argued till we're a bit bored of it really about the relative levels of testing in various countries. So let's go on to the thing that's really more important, which is the hospitalizations. Uh, new uh, number of COVID-19 patients in hospital per million. France, pretty high. Um, but we would expect that to come down as the cases go down with a bit of a delay. United Now, this is actually the Israel data here. So that's gone down fairly sharply. This is the United States data here. G again, going down really quite, quite nicely in the States. Denmark and Canada, which one's which? I think, um, you know, I'm not sure which one's which on that. Uh, De Den Den no, Can that's Canada, that's Canada there. That's Canada and that, that's Denmark. So um, Canada going down in hospitalizations, Denmark going up in hospitalizations. Uh, United Kingdom going down. Japan, quite a sharp increase, it has to be said there, in Japan. Australia going down gradually, Netherlands going up a little bit, but still relatively low. Big thing about Australia, of course, is um, Western Australia, which is still pretty well closed off. Now, they're going to have to open the borders sooner or later. Then Omicron is going to spread through Western Australia in a matter of a couple of weeks. So, well, it's, it's a fairly rural area or spread through the Perth area in a couple of weeks, for sure. Uh, the, the rest of it getting way up and down into the remote areas might take a, a couple of months because it's very remote. But why they're delaying on that, I'm not really sure. New Zealand in a similar situation, um, surely just postponing the, the inevitable, I would have thought. But maybe they know something I don't. So that's patients in hospital. Now, this is the variance. Now, I think, yeah, countries are catching up. So Israel, uh, all Omicron, Denmark, all Omicron, United Kingdom, all Omicron, United States, all Omicron, essentially. Still a little bit of residual delta in Germany. Um, Australia, I'm surprised there's as much delta in Australia. This is probably still a bit out of date, um, um, but, but it, it, this is current. I mean, I've just downloaded this now. But so basically we see Omicron has taken over. And let's be clear, because we're not seeing cases of Delta, Omicron has replaced Delta. Remarkably good news. Uh, now, this is the R value, which is always interesting to take a look at. This is R1 here. So, of course, anything above this, numbers increasing. Anything below, numbers decreasing. And here we see it. Now, this is, uh, so firstly, slight increase in numbers in Denmark, Netherlands, Japan, Germany and the United Kingdom has got a bit of an uptick there in terms of, uh, well, the, well, well, the cases are maybe slightly up in the UK, but we're not testing that well. More, more on that in a minute. Anyway, that, that's one. So these countries are definitely going up in numbers. Um, now, the rate of increase has uh, decelerated. They're not increasing as fast, but they're still increasing. Uh, below one, uh, France, Israel, Canada, India, Australia and uh, United States. So um, always interesting to keep an eye on the on the, the reproductive uh, val values in those in those areas. Now th th let me just show you all the references um, I'm going to use here. Um, don't want anyone saying we're not evidence based. <laughs> so we're going to have a quick look at these now, J just by way of uh, background. Now this is the the United States. Um, 
Trends in the number of COVID cases and deaths. So cases, wow, what a dramatic reduction in the States. Very impressive reduction in cases. Now, deaths, alas, in the States have been lamentably high. I didn't check on the latest number. I think it's over 900,000 now. It really is quite appalling and still remaining high. Now, these numbers will go down, of course, because the cases are going down. It's just the lag that is the problem. So very sad number of deaths actually in, in the States. Uh, this is hospitalizations in the States. So what, down 21.6% in the last uh, uh, seven day peak average. Yeah, down 21% and uh, average percentage from the peak, 28% uh, down. So we see that um, hospitalizations did actually go higher with Omicron, which is a reflection largely of the comorbidities and the way that numbers are accounted for in the states as we've considered before but definitely the point is i'm making it definitely nicely on the way down now now this is the uk summary data here and it's looking fairly promising so people testing positive going down although we know it's not picking everyone up we're certain, i'm pretty certain about that deaths um still going up slightly on the week uh, because of the lag effect and this 314 deaths, 1,802 in the past week. Still relatively, well, way higher than we would like, obviously. Well, we'd like a zero number completely. Um, patients admitted to hospital down and uh, virus tests conducted down a bit. Um, I'm not going to go into that because that's a, bit, that's a bit of a long story. So cases in the UK, let's see what we're getting. Well, if we go for the last... Uh, month we've got a nice downward trend this is probably a more useful indicator here nice downward trend here we can see let's look at the last three months there we go where we see the peak and it's going down nicely in the last month the case is definitely going down if we look at healthcare in the uk patients in hospital well again definitely going down again that's three months uh yeah that's the last month and the patients in mechanically ventilated beds, well, it's always been relatively low. Let's look at the last three months again. So um, all through the Omicron period, it's been, well, it was coming down when it was fairly flat. And then it certainly went down in the Omicron period. So I think we have Omicron to thank for a lot of this. And we still see ongoing reductions because Omicron has replaced the more uh, pathogenic Delta. But the, the last, the last uh, sort of data burst I'm going to give you today is the COVID symptom tracker data, always up to date, to over two and a half million people currently infected, that's the prevalence, uh, two, two, 200,000 uh, new daily cases. And this is interesting. So there's a, quite a significant uptick here in the number of symptomatic case, ca cases. So these are patients that are symptomatic. And of course, they're higher than the, that. The, the uptick here is much more than in the uh, official cases because this is symptomatic cases, and we know that there's problems that uh, have been pointed out with uh, testing. So we are seeing an uptick in actual numbers of infections, I believe, in the UK, as indicated by the the symptomatic data here. So as as we say, that was all of those uh, references. Now, let's. Um, Go on to some better news. Um, well, that's a lot. That a lot of that was good news, actually. Medicines Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency. This is at the United Kingdom, of course. Novavax COVID nineteen vaccine. Uh, new, new, new Vaxoid approved. So that's good. This is the protein based Novavax. I believe Novavax is in the states. I think it's in Maryland, and and I think it received quite a lot of federal money to develop this as well. Uh, the approval authorities uh, authorise the use of this vaccine people aged 18 and older for the first and second dose. That's in the UK. So that is good news. Protein-based platform like hepatitis uh, and hepatitis B and shingles. I've certainly had the hepatitis B. All healthcare workers would be very well advised to get that. Well, our students used to get that. Um, I haven't had the shingles one. Uh, can be stored in a refrigerator, which is good. Efficacy against the original variant, uh, this New England Journal of Medicine paper, it was 96%. Against the Alpha variant, the UK Kent variant, as it was called, uh, 86%. Now, the Beta variant, this was, this was nearly all in South Africa. 
and of course the beta variant was associated with quite a lot of immune escape and it was quite a concern but it was replaced uh, by by the delta variant because the delta variant outcompeted it so i guess you could say that was the good thing about the delta it replaced uh, beta but of course uh, omicron is more contagious than beta and delta um, but beta was known for the immune escape and we were quite concerned that this was spread around the world <clears throat> causing quite a lot of immune escape but thankfully <clears throat> thankfully delta came along thankfully in that in that way of thinking anyway and uh, replaced it united states and mexico study of 30,000 people efficacy was 90.4 percent in preventing symptomatic infection um developing uh, an omicron specific vaccine well let's hope that's not needed i think i'm pretty sure we, we looked at this before no um all all, all of them um but, but I, th I think pfizer pfizer for sure moderna i'm pretty sure is developing an omicron specific vaccine very optimistic it's not going to be needed but they're developing it nonetheless i think the thing is with these protein based vaccines i think you can develop them really quite quickly the, the testing, how it goes with three doses and mix and match probably is going to be acceptable, but no firm recommendations on that. Now, one of the things that generated an awful lot of uh, debate is in the States is the use of um, masking in schools. And this does seem to be gradually on the way out. So, for example, New Jersey is probably going to be phased out second week, week of March. It was about next week. Students and, and uh, school employees no longer required to wear masks. Uh, in the age of Omicron, um, it has changed the equation, in my view. Uh, th th this is not a declaration of victory as much as an acknowledgement that we can responsibly live with this thing, meaning the virus, of course. Uh, and, and that's from uh, Governor uh, Murphy. Now, um, if you, if you uh, the, the the article I've put there, that's a New York Times one, but you could have looked at several popular outlets in the states, uh, different states. Um, I've got very different timetables on this and different ideas on this. But uh, the gradual trend is to relax uh, recommendations on, on that now. And of course, some states have actually legislated against mandates. So it's a bit of a mixed picture in the states. But I believe Omicron is significantly changing the picture. Now, on to the main thing I want to talk about, really. Um, <laughs> well, we'll see, how, we'll see how we go. Reverse zoonosis to deer. So zoonosis, of course, is the transfer of uh, an infection, in this case, sars coronavirus 2 from animals to humans. Reverse zoonosis is when it goes from humans back to animals. And we've seen this already. We've seen it in uh, cats in the original Wuhan strain. We've seen it in a troop, couple of troops of gorillas. Um, not surprising because of their similarity to, to humans. Uh, we saw it in uh, mice in, in Hong Kong. Uh, we, and China uh, and Africa. Um, we saw it in uh, ferrets in um, Denmark, for example, uh, where, where appallingly all those ferrets were killed, but they looked like they had pretty miserable cage lives anyway from the pictures I saw. You know, one of the things about this pandemic, I, I, I was really hoping that this idea of zoonosis, that our health might be threatened, might have, of course, the more enlightened view on animal uh, and animal uh, well-being, but it doesn't seem to have done. Whether it's the brutal capture and slaughter of animals in China and Vietnam um, for for meat or for ludicrous mumbo jumbo um, uh, sort of me medical ideas, the idea that particular things pangolin scales or an aphrodisiac or whatever it is it's mumbo jumbo stuff because the proteins are broken down in the gut it just makes no sense at all or, 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 or whether it's the, the the mass um cloned farming or closely bred farming in the united kingdom the united states europe and and the way that animals are treated just doesn't seem to have improved at all as a result of the pandemic which is very very disappointing uh, e even now we realise that the risk to our own health I mean the, the, the huge um, herds and flocks that we have in, in, in the UK and the US for example are just rife for, for infection and spread of infection apart, apart, apart from the fact that the way the animals are kept is often completely unacceptable um, human beings don't seem to learn very well or, or see, certainly learn slowly so it's only disappointment there and i'm sure many of you share that sentiment anyway uh, th th these are the articles full pdf here now this is not peer-reviewed yet but it's from pretty reputable uh, scientists white-tailed deer and they're called that <laughs> um 
white-tailed deer. Um, and these ones li live uh, in quite nice parks, I think, in Staten Island. Do, do let me know how well they're kept. I assume it's quite good. Um, highly susceptible to infection by SARS coronavirus 2, these deer. Uh, multiple reports of widespread spillover from humans to free-living deer. Now, quite how this has got from humans to deer um, is, is less clear. Um, now, people are saying it might be because people are feeding deer by hand. Well, it could be because the Omicron virus is aerosolized and it's simply spreading in the air, which I haven't read, but that seems to be the most likely thing to me, that we're breathing this virus out droplet infection, aerosolized infection, and the deer, which, you know, m m might be just a short distance away, are simply breathing it in. And that seems the most likely route to me. If there's any veterinary microbiologist there, do, do correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that seems the most likely route to me. Um, SARS coronavirus 2, the original Omicron variant, seems to be the one that is spreading. So Staten Island, New York, uh, 12th of December, to uh, the 31st of January. White-tailed deer opportunistically sampled on Staten Island, just when they got hold of the creatures, presumably. Um, or trapping them for, for other reasons, I don't know. But the, anyway, they're opportunistically sampled, which is fair enough. 19 of the 133, 14.5% were positive for SARS coronavirus 2. So enough to indicate that it's spreading. And they actually did PCR tests on uh, 68 a PCR testing on 68 deer, uh, seven actively infected at the time of sampling, so confirmed by PCR. And they also did specific antibodies indicating prior exposure. Now, they found, they found SARS coronavirus 2 antibodies in quite a few of these deer, but they were unable to say whether it was from a previous strain, in other words, whether they'd been infected by Wuhan wild type B11 variant, whether they'd been infected by Alpha variant, whether they'd been infected by Delta variant, or whether they'd made antibodies fairly quickly to the um, Omicron variant. Although presumably they were looking for IgG, so they'd have to make them fairly quickly, you would have thought. But, but, but there is time to make them, certainly time to make them. Um, <clears throat> so um, unclear whether it's that or previous variant. So in other words, have these deer been infected before? <coughs> have some of these deer been affected before? Um, we, we don't actually know that yet. The d deer don't seem to be symptomatic. They don't seem to get sick. So it's a bit hard to tell. You really only tell by testing, not because the deer is looking a bit poorly. From what I can gather, from what I've read anyway. Again, vets are welcome to uh, correct me on that if it's wrong. Um, specific serum antibodies, so whether it's Omicron or previous version, not sure. Whole genome sequencing, only done on four of the PCR tests, but they were all Omicron. So it looks pretty conclusive that the deer have caught the Omicron from humans and that the Omicron is spreading from deer to deer. Presumably, again, because of a per respiratory infection almost certainly that's what's happening no word so far or no cases so far of deer reverse well deer sending zoonotic infection from deer to humans so it seems that humans have infected deer it's spreading from deer to deer no record of it going from deer back to humans as of yet but i'll tell you why i'm concerned about this now um so phylogenetic, phylogenetic Omicron sequence clusters closely with those uh, sequence covered from infected humans in New York. In other words, the Omicron in the deer was basically the same as the Omicron in the people in New York, indicating strongly, well, almost proving really, indicating very strongly that the Omicron had come from local New Yorkers into the deer because it was the same genetic sequence. So human spillover to deer looks like the obvious cause. The urgent need for comprehensive surveillance of susceptible animal species is called for to identify ecological transmission networks in the paper. Now, this is why this is important, because the, um, when the virus is infecting humans, the virus is going to evolve in a way that's going to make it more able to infect humans, which is part of the reason we've seen more infectious variants come along. Although Omicron, we still don't know where that came from. It, it still probably came from mice. So the idea is with Omicron, it evolved in a particular way that allowed it to fit into the mouse, uh, uh, mouse ACE2 receptor more efficiently. It evolved to do that. 
and then it went back to humans and we were just fortunate that it, it caused less severe disease in humans and in the same way if, if the virus is multiplying and spreading in deer and of course every time the virus replicates there's going to be uh, some mutation of, of the virus then the question is when it's mutating in deer could that mutate into a way that makes the virus more able to infect deer changing the amino acid profile and protein makeup of the virus to make it more likely inf to infect deer. But as a side effect, could that cause more pathogenic disease in humans? Now, I'm not, there's no evidence for this, but that, that is the concern. And of course, it's not just deer, it's all other animals that this could be infected in. And of course, this makes it all the more likely that there's going to be an endemic Omicron or an endemic SARS coronavirus 2 for some time. So that would be the concern. That whatever animal it is, whether it's deer or hamsters or mice or whatever it is, or wild animals, um, that as the virus evolves to make it easier for the virus to infect those particular animals, as a side effect of that, it could make it more pathogenic for humans. Now, with Omicron, we were fortunate it made it way less, well, significantly less pathogenic for humans and didn't cause immune escape. Well, it did cause immune escape, but not massive immune escape. So with Omicron, we were fortunate indeed blessed uh, next time might not be quite so lucky now i'm not overly concerned about this but th th this is a potential a potential threat and this is this is why the authors of this paper are saying things like urgent need for comprehensive surveillance susceptible animal species to identify ecological transmission networks so we certainly agree that that should be uh, that should be done and better assess the potential risk of spill back to humans, of course. And because the virus is evolving to adapt to the new host, how will that play out when it goes to a different species, for example, humans? Infected with earlier variants being various parts of the states. Again, these are all in deer. Uh, quite a few places uh, involved. Uh, deer have appeared asymptomatic when infected with earlier variants. So it looks like the deer are asymptomatic but yet the virus has definitely been spreading amongst the, uh, the deer. So something to keep an eye on there. Um, I think if a more pathogenic variant did evolve in animals, it would only start spreading in humans. It could spread to individual humans, but it would only start spreading in humans if it were able to outcompete the endemic Omicron. This is why Omicron is, is a blessing, because I think unless, the, unless a new virus had really massive immune escape, that it could rapidly infect people that had been previously infected and people that had been vaccinated and that's had massive immune escape it really is unlikely that it would evolve into a like an omicron plus 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 uh, the, uh, well i suppose you could say the omicron ba2 is the, is the omicron plus <laughs> i don't think it's unlikely to evolve into an omicron plus 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 because the, the omicron ba2 is already massively transmissible and we will be very unfortunate to have a, a very pathogenic but very transmissible virus that evolved in animals. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but it's something that certainly is monitored. And if this gives us pause for reflection on the way we treat animals as human beings, as the dominant species on this planet, that would be a good side effect. Okay, thank you for watching.